correct. Just kill it. I have the most faith in you that you just wouldn't believe. <laughs> There's uh, also flux now, so that's good. <laughs> Try not to eat too much of it. Jordan. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Man, I am clinky, clinky Vinstone. I got my cuffs on because I got my Sparkly Vampire shirt that I just got. Oh, I love it. It's brilliant. I'm here in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, switching the bit, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux. Joined every week where a man up north. This week Beep he boop. is a pyramid with wings. That's yes. what he is. It is brilliant. It is terrifying. But it's also one Jordan's funk. And um, the man next to Bitey Cage on the island, staying up late past his bedtime, one Pedro Mateus, join us together with you live, <laughs> helping us form Toki and Voltron. Do we, do we need like um, Ginyu moves? Like form Wait, of... I, we, we, had a, we had a show cover that had us doing the Ginyu stuff. I don't know what happened to it. I made it, then I posted it, and it, I think it's still there. All right, so this is that just a matter of finding yeah! which episode it's... Uh... <laughs> is, is that what we got to do for, like, uh, Hallow Christmas Eve? Spook, ween? Spook, spooky Ween is, like, in some sand suits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they would just blow holes in each other, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fine. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, I, call, I call Pedro for Galdo. Okay. Oh, oh. I, 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 I want to I be burger. <laughs> Fine, I'm, I'm the ship. You're the you're the ball. All right. Yep, that's the thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's wrong, no. Pedro? What are you thinking about, you pervert? He's thinking no, about switching no, bodies. I'm with not me. gonna go this there. One. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking, so no, I'm not. No. I, I like that. Like, that's ever gotten you out of anything in your entire life. I've been drinking. I mean, Linux Nero <laughs> seems to think so, but it doesn't. Know. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, that that's me pleading to fifth right there. <laughs> Pedro, what have you been up to this week, man? I saw that you got, uh, you, you got a little metal stick that plugs into a USB outlet and gets more. Uh, you got a hand warmer. Yeah, uh, it, it actually does get, uh, if you touch it, it will basically uh, get rid of uh, f f any fingerprints that you may have uh but yeah okay. no it's a so simple for our audio <laughs> listeners i want you to imagine a pair of safety scissors okay yeah it's that but us in soldering iron form a it's a teeny solder? tiny little yeah uh usb one uh it's eight watts so uh the only <laughs> the only power supply that i could find uh, available that could do anything up to eight watts starting from five volts because usb uh was this three amp one that actually goes up to 15 watts so that should be plenty to power to this and it was because it was getting up to temperature and the handle itself was not getting terribly warm it was just a tip so that's kind of what it's supposed to do so it was working the problem always, was always what <laughs> I always get weirded out when I see like the European and the British like plugs because oh. like the the North American ones are like very small and these ones are all super chunky. They are, oh, but, yeah. but they they have um, <laughs> built-in breakers too. <laughs> yeah, they're they're all safety. It's fused. Ah. It, it's basically Canada, North America, and Japan, Erica, and like, <laughs> yeah, we're rocking the one twenty dual prong yolos. Like, yeah, buddy. yeah, it catches on fire sometimes. Hey, what you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. And, but no, this one didn't catch on fire. In fact, it had a lot of trouble melting the one mil thick solder wire that I'd gotten because I wasn't paying attention and I ordered uh, one with too thick a gauge that eight watts can't melt properly. It Are takes you sure a long you just time. Didn't get like a uh, friction based one, you had to rub it real hard and real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, I okay. went back to watch the video that I had watched, and uh, they said it's like anything from 0 0.8 or below should be fine. And I got the one mil, so of course that wasn't gonna work. So I got some 0 0.6 now. So I'm gonna try again. I already put everything um, together on this one, so it's just a matter of actually mounting it up and uh, getting <laughs> just, to it. Just kill it. I have the most faith in you that you just wouldn't believe. <laughs> There's uh, also flux now, so that's good. <laughs> Try not to eat too much of it. Jordan. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, what's up? You've been eating. 
Have you had any flux lately? No, I have not. I heard that shit's delicious. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I'm, 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 I, we were talking about this on Thursday. I've been pricing out like home gym shit because they shut down the gyms again. Dude, we were and, like, uh, yeah, we were searching for bars. Yeah, um, and if you want stuff that doesn't break, it's very expensive. I, th- I, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm initial estimates right now. If if I go for like minimum quality of like something that can support seven hundred pounds, mm-hmm. I'm not plus like seven hundred pounds worth of barbell weights. I'm maybe Didn't looking you just at get like, like uh, two three fifties and some tape. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some duct tape. Yeah, balance, needs, man. needs a lot of duct tape. Yeah, yeah it's gonna it's, it's gonna be about four grand when all said and done. I gotta get clearance to like Oof. also build it in here too. Oof. But like all the floors here are concrete. It should be fine. Yeah, I and listen, man. It, speaking of balance, no joke. That will make you you because I've one thing I've noticed like just in here because I've got mm-hmm. everything set up. It's made me slow the fuck down, you know, and work on like not slamming the weights is what i'm getting at man you know mm-hmm. you're gonna be like okay I'm, I'm gonna be very careful with my form yes take good care put everything down we're not gonna be sliding any belt everything's gonna be locked on it's gonna be good so i think that'd be a good thing maybe yeah yeah indeed what about you then I, I i heard you got access to your apple account finally mother <laughs> man the this was an adventure kids um the iTunes feed. Okay, I had to do something about it. The only way I had access to it was that Windows 10 tablet that I bought. You remember those? Like the one book eights? And I mm. bought one for like what, 70, 80 bucks way back in the day. It just got to the point where iTunes wouldn't run on it anymore and I didn't mess with it. So that account, I'd lost the password username. It's, it's an RSS feed. You don't have to mess with it too much. It's always been working. But I wanted to regain control over it. So I managed to figure out what the username and password was for weekly, daily Wednesdays. And I was like, all right, that's a base. That's a start. Let me contact him from this. Back and forth. This has been something that's been going on for months. And I finally got a hold of someone, emailed me back. Like, you know what? Here, we'll tell you this. Because, you know, this is like a very likely story, right? I'm like, I just lost. Can I, can I have it? But I'm like, it's. I'm sending it from the domain. So there's a better chance than not that... You know, but then again, they don't know. I might be giving away free email addresses. Short story long, uh, I had to put some like extra moon glyph codes in the copyright in the iTunes description for uh, LGC Weekly. Waited a few minutes and a uh, few minutes, it's a few days. Now it's back. So I have control of the feed just in time for like Apple and Cloudflare and Amazon AWS to like get all pissy and fighty about um, SSL certificates mm. and Who's going to deal with what and the feed network? Have you been dealing with that? My, I, I'm going to say my bad. It's not my bad. But hey, man, if you need someone to blame, the feeds were kind of squirrely last week. So um, mm. that should be kind of sort of result. Also, it was real fun to uh, burn $300 of free Google credit because I was just curious. And I, man, I just lit that on fire Wednesday. That was fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Outside of that. Oh. Raspberry Pi videos. They'll be coming up uh, for patrons. I should have that done by Wednesday. If you've been curious about what the high quality Pi looks like as a webcam under Linux with a couple of lenses. I have two lenses now because I fucked up and bought the wrong lens the first time. So we got two. I would compare it against that. Uh, this camera, which is a D3400 and like a Logitech webcam. We'll do some side by side comparisons, all that. But most importantly, I'm going to show you how to take that high quality camera, Raspberry Pi Zero W. Or just do it with Raspberry Pi Zero and five minutes, have it up and working, plug it in, good to go. So, yeah, it's going to be 10 times, no, 11 times more efficient than the horse. The horse isn't very efficient at all. So, that's not like a really good benchmark. I don't know. It hasn't been really <laughs> Keeps doing much. all the solder paste. Yeah. <laughs> ever since Steam Machines died, it's the Steam And, uh, well, uh, I-, I was wondering last week and the week before that when Valve were going to update Proton, and here they are making me eat my words. Proton 513-1 is out, and it has some oh, new... Oh, boy, uh, that's... That's, that's, a, that's a bit of a list. <laughs> yeah. Whitelist, baby! <laughs> new, new games for the Sharequisition! I'm excited! <laughs> 
Yeah, no, and uh, one of them was, uh, of course, Dirt Rally 2, which I had. It was part of a bundle a while back, so I bought it. Um, and yeah, no, it works. I fired it up. It works. Uh, it had that really annoying narrator uh, describing everything I was highlighting in the menu, and the first thing I had to do was look up how to disable that, because fuck that. Uh, the, uh, the other thing that it did was it claims that it now has improved video support, because if you've played with Proton games in the past with just the default Proton, you might have noticed that some games don't show cutscenes at all because they had disabled any kind of video playback because they didn't have any kind of codecs uh, in place. This time around, they have. And they say that older games should work right now. So I started up a game from 2014, hit the new game to see if the intro cutscene worked, and I got the uh, little color bars, uh, you know, when... the the uh, broadcast the stop the color you got to see. <laughs> yeah, you got to see the color tests uh, on the TV. Looks a lot like that with a quarter Beep. of just static. Oh, no. And um, when I posted about it on the um, Proton GitHub. Oh, oh there's a page over here somewhere. Oh. Uh, yes. <laughs> Con -con Control F unaccounted for? Probably. Yes. There we go. <laughs> oh, this is really awesome. Thanks for liking it. Linking it. Linking it. And uh, he, uh, Honking Goose, was the one who uh, linked that particular thread to me. Uh, he has since moved all of the codecs to the uh, to his own GitHub, uh, and he is actually keeping track of all the codecs that Proton currently supports and the games that he uh, everyone has been contributing to that. Uh, the games that uh, he's aware that Proton does work with so that's really awesome to see. But yeah, no, any kind of quartz video. Uh, <laughs> MF uh, Media Foundation videos. Those are probably still not going to work, but that little color screen is an indication that yes, that is progress. That means that as soon as that codec is available in Proton, the cutscene will work. So that, yeah, that, that's that, better dude, than I rolled out, I installed this, I was glad to see it. It's the new hotness, it's new Proton. Um, it's built against the next generation of the Steam Linux runtime, which has this awesome new ability of fucking not working with Mango Hut. Good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> one, 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 th one thing that's weird to me, though, is uh, so we, we, got, we got this brand new whitelist. We have all these games. They certified Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, which was like a demo they released for 5 proper. It was a, a tech demo, uh -huh. and th they, didn't, they didn't certify 5 proper. That's a little weird. But yeah, um, I, I, I was reading into that uh, issue with the codex as well. A lot of it has to do with a lot of the um, Windows media player files, WMVs. MF they, they didn't. Yeah, they, they depend on some DLL that's illegal to ship, so they have to do a clean room implementation. It's a whole deal, um, but... Quarks.dll. No, <laughs> here, here's something I definitely want to ask. Are we talking like illegal or like we just never really asked anyone, so we're just we're playing it safe, but... It's, my, it's Microsoft, so probably they're going to, if they smell any sort of copyright infringement, they're going to... Unless gonna... it's part of the XFET patent. Uh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what if I buy like three Xboxes? Then can I use it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we, I don't think that's uh, how that works, but okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to throwing cheers at the second South Park game. We got we got that on the waitlist now, so that's, mm -hmm. that's cool. But we also There's, got some new hot Proton with glorious egg roll yeah, technology. Pro Proton GE, they have a new version as well. I guess Glorious Eggroll now has a new version of Proton he's going to start hacking on too. Um, but uh, the new version, GE 8ST, is out. That's the stable one. Uh, it has more fixes for uh, Sirius Sam 4. Uh, the flickering issue is apparently fixed. Uh, they're getting some better NVIDIA you know, making the game work as well. Uh, if you want to use the native Vulcan instead of Dix Vix, um, Baldur's Gate three has a bunch of fixes as well, which makes me very, very happy. Cause in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be spending $80. I don't, I don't know. This is, that's my real question. It's like, how have you not bought that? Right. It's, I've, I've it, it, it's, 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 I a know struggle. why I haven't. Is, is that why you bought the, uh, HDMI <laughs> encoder? You're like, no, <laughs> No, I'll yeah. spend the money elsewhere. You, you definitely ex ex yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, they also have the new Dix Fix. Uh, we talked about the latest release last week. Uh, this one has the new one pulled in as well. So, yeah, hopefully that'll help games working. Okay, like, I don't know. Death Stranding, yeah. Soul Caliber, Watch Dogs, Just Cause. I dropped it in, and it apparently runs Wolfenstein, uh, Youngblood. So how's that going? Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, all right, <laughs> fair enough. So. Um, steam machines, right? That Steam was, machines. Uh, 
even when they were coming out, yes, yes, everyone was excited. And I, myself, I was right there with you. I was cheerleading like, yay, but we secretly do. And it's like, it's not quite ready yet because we had already, even, even then we, we knew what the promise of Vulcan was. And we're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that- that and so th- this this is this is an article from Boiling Boiling Steam. It's Boiling a bit of an editorial. Steam. Boiling, Boiling Steam. Steam. <laughs> Boiling Steam. Boiling Bowls for Steam. Of steam. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> links to all that in the show notes. Uh, so this is a little opinion piece. Uh, was it all in vain? And you know, on this show, we've discussed this topic to death. But nay, the horse demands more. That's the entire horse joke. Nay. Um, but uh, a kind Joe uh, has a lot of good points beyond the rote repetition of the multitude of reasons why Steam OS w- uh, just didn't what? work hang on hang on uh, hey the, what's this kerning he's he's he's, he's talking he about is, little things that example. Uh, yeah yeah he, he's <laughs> talking about things you don't notice until someone points it out to you and then you can't help but see it uh, okay somebody make that different somehow that's the same shit one's a little smaller space, space between the letters uh, look at the p yeah, what about it? The piece, the, the space well, between that, the P pa- and pa- the Pedro, M. Pedro, and Pedro, the Ven doesn't give it. <laughs> Ven doesn't give a shit about kerning. Let's move on. Otherwise, it's gonna be a whole thing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, but I mean, going going back to this, um, yeah, uh, the, the opinion piece has some good points about uh, Steam OS not being an abject failure because it re- it um, resulted in a lot of good stuff coming out. Uh, there was a lot of good tooling, a lot of good driver development happening as a result of it. ACO wouldn't have been a thing without. Steam mm-hmm. machines failing. Um, neither would uh, the visual GL debugger, uh, Dixvix, any of this stuff, really. Um, so or yeah, one of the points that he actually brings up, which is Netflix, that would that wouldn't even work in the Valve uh, Steam browser if people hadn't pointed it out, and it does now. <laughs> Indeed, uh, but like that, that's the thing, though. Like admitting failure is kind of abhorrent if you're a publicly traded company, but Valve not being that can admit failure and failure is informative. Um, You know, why, why, why keep putting money into something that's clearly not producing the dividends that you want? Focus your effort elsewhere. Well, then again, Um, this is Valve and the answer to that more often than not is because we fucking can. We're Valve, didn't you see? Yeah, but again, we, we, we did get could. some good stuff out of it. Well, I think this was just a perfect example of like Valve fucking it up right out of the gate by by another me- no other method than just Valve being Valve, man. Because my first thought, I mean, we were talking about it way back in the day, man. Just imagine like Steam machines launched today, right? So we got Vulcan down, we got the Proton down. All that's working. Now, imagine this. Go on this journey with me. If someone, anyone else was in charge of the launch, manufacturing, and marketing, anyone other than valve and um Mm -hmm. yeah and they were also in charge of like developer coordination yeah well anyone other than valve like any company that has actual (laughs) experience in any of the shit i just said well i mean that i don't think that would happen right the, oh, well, Val- here's Val- the was, problem Val- though valve was probably a, our best bet for this absolute bow on my point it's never going to happen because you do not burn hardware manufacturers. Well, you do. You get one shot at it. That has yeah, been done. They did. Well, uh, well, I, they I, undercut the, the, all of the OEM partners. Now, because, admittedly, oh, yeah. admittedly, <laughs> man, part of that is on their partners going, they don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. Mm-hmm. P- p- part of it they as well. That, that price point, they're, they're, the price point they were selling Steam machines at was not going to be a mover. Mm-hmm. Nope, not yeah. a, not at all. The not, only one no. that had actually stood a chance was Dell of all people with the Alienware uh, Steam machine. That and was you actually a very good. Of that. Yeah, they released the Windows version of that because Valve was kind of dragging their heels on the whole thing, and now we yeah. know why. Because they wanted to undercut all of their OEM partners with the frickin' link. Oh yeah, $30 and you get something that that's what most people would want. Something to stream from their big honking gaming machine to their TV. Hey man, look, at least we have we, we got <laughs> participation trophies yeah i got yeah. two of them i got one, one brand new in box there next to the tv yeah. <laughs> so 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 bring, bring bring up the point of developer coordination though like the, this this is a thing that uh the editorial brings up as well and like i don't see how that could have ever happened we had the linux chicken and egg scenario there's no games on linux no one wants to make games for linux because no one's buying games on linux blah 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 valve was the one who actually seriously took that step humble did it a little bit before that but it wasn't enough to like get any sort of major momentum um but these days like 
such a proposition is just impossible now, thanks to Proton, uh, because now you can't get developer coordination because it'll just run in wine. Well, how, why, how, why would why would we develop? How many decades have different companies uh, attempted, like even all the way back to like the Apple Pippin, to bring the PC into the living room like that? You know, in the form, like in its truest form, of like, hey, you just put in a PC game. And you can play it on the couch. And I just don't think that's ever been viable, and I don't think it ever will be viable. Now, there's, yeah, there's uh, something to be said about the people who do want an HTPC, but even... They, they like, build them, though. Yeah, all seven yeah, of to them. The, yeah, to the point uh, of the article is... Um, <laughs> Not everyone, uh, or the people who do want that HTPC experience, will have a better experience using, like, Kodi than they will with SteamOS, because SteamOS has been lacking functionality, and the big picture mode uh, interface is completely outdated when you compare it to even the regular client that we have right well, now. It hasn't even, been updated since even, SteamOS even, came even the out, notion, basically. Even, <laughs> even the notion that you're paying PC prices for something that you can't really use as a PC by default, not without SSHing yeah. into the damn thing and installing a desktop environment. Well, then so, we got things, I, I mean, you're competing against subsidized consoles. I mean, you got the, like, the new XC1 yeah. one box <laughs> X1X X, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. by all accounts, that's a fucking gaming rig. Yeah, for 500 yeah. bucks like a mm -hmm. i'm never gonna say like bleeding edge but a fucking high-end one yeah that that it and, is and it's got a like mid to high-end range gpu and the processor is an eight core uh ryzen processor so we're talking like 3700x ish type of performance yeah it's it's an expensive laptop <laughs> it's, an, it's an expensive laptop in a 500 hundred dollar package for sure but yeah Again, it's it's an interesting thought experiment to look at, like, you know, CMOS did succeed in some ways. It gave, it gave us a bunch of good stuff as a result of its failure. It's kind of like the space program. Space program was never about actually getting into space. Space program was about developing a bunch of technology that results from having the requirement to go to space. No, so, no, it's just a long game to get to Velcro. Once we get to Velcro, we get that figured out. That's why it just petered out. We're like, shit, we got Velcro now. Fuck it. Yeah, but, but, now you it. but now you need to run Velcro on Wine if you want to use it in Linux. I'm so. just saying, man. But yeah, we got some good uh, benefits out of the tech and the stuff involved, and we've all benefited from it. So thank you, Val. I mean, yes. that it was fuck up go, fuck ups go. That was a brilliant one. And that was amazing. Yeah. yeah thumbs up <laughs> on that one. I hope to personally, my next fuck up goes as well as that one. So, um, Mm -hmm. Terraria. Uh, Terraria. Yeah, man. Can't get enough of this game. If you follow me, I'm always playing Terraria. Uh, okay, Scott. A lot of people Mir, would Mir. watch our channel if you did, though. Probably. <laughs> it, it would be terrifying. 141. There's a little bit of an update, man. This is just new content, quality of life. There's balances, fixes, and more because I'm just reading off of it. The one thing I wanted to throw into this was there's been an update to FNA. So let's see if I can cheat. FNA. There it is. For Mag and Linux, it's been updated. I don't know exactly to what, but there is an update. So maybe if you're like, oh man, my FNA is not working correctly, uh, maybe this will fix it. Well, th th this is when you go to flip its Twitter account because he's usually providing actual information about this stuff. So okay. yes. Uh, Flippity Jibaibo mm -hmm. on Twitter. It's it's he's the recommended like guy. Neither to one of these motherfuckers. He's the <laughs> neither one of these people did that, but Absolutely, they absolutely, they absolutely not. <laughs> right. I, I read, I read about the game update. They're adding like not Princess Peach and a bunch of other mm -hmm. stuff. But you know, what exactly is? Uh... <laughs> it's it's two uh, D Minecraft. Minecraft. Two D Minecraft. Okay, because I think we played it for a minute. It's multiplayer, right? Yeah. Now what's yeah, about? Uh, it's yeah, very but, similar. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it's the yeah. Oh, right. We played one or the other. That was not the other. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> People love the fuck out of them games, though, man. Oh yeah, no, there, there, there's a lot of replayability. It it does like the the roguelike thing of randomizing your game every time. Uh, there's a ton of depth to it. You can build stuff. You can adventure. Blah blah blah. It's it, it's it's a solid game. There's a reason why it has a million clones like Starbound is because people really gravitate to this genre of game. So okay. it's yep. good. It's good. It's good to see that at least, you know, the, the OG is keeping up with the FNA updates for Speaking whatever of version genre of games, nice. man. There's one particular oh, genre we cannot rip you away from. Golf, man. Golf. What the always what golf. The, what the what the golf, man? It's look. It's the thing. Horse, we, horse, <laughs> horse. Not not just horse. Car, a uh, giant 
robot. There's there's some there's some <laughs> weird shit <laughs> happening here. Yeah. Else. So uh, I, it, it, it's 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 described as a golf game made by people who know nothing about golf. Okay. And yeah, like look, look, looking through the trailers, like okay, you have you have you had my curiosity. Now you have my attention. Um, also brought to you by Fig. So that's uh, that's the thing. Um, but oh yeah, wow! I, Something yeah. Like, okay. Better love story than uh, something crazy that is justice. That Fortnite yeah, right. clone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, based, based, on, based on the trailer, it's a, ba- a bunch of non golf games with golf mechanics where you just drag and click and a bunch of weird shit happens. Angry I, Birds I, uh, golf. Okay. Golf is a lie. <laughs> me, me, metal golf solid. Um, assa- <laughs> Assassin's golf. Oh, it I doesn't don't. have multiplayer. You fucked up the end game. God damn it. Yeah. Boo. Oh, oh, only only remote play. But, I, held, know, you, you, you I can genuinely golf held off scrolling down while I was watching. I was like, come on. And I want to believe for a second. No. no. Yeah, that, that's always the thing that Jordan is uh, always going on about. And I kind of have to agree because it's 2020. Current your argument and whatnot. Yep. We're Listen, in a are pandemic stuck at home. where we can't. Go yeah. to other people's houses. <laughs> we need online multiplayer games. Nope. No. Lots of them. Did you just get waited out like everybody else and then then see like, yeah, group, big, large gatherings are going to happen again, right? <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Well, I mean, they're happening it's right now, regardless. Is, uh, yeah, <laughs> like 18 more. Yeah, I just keep, keep saying that after all the like event organizers are like, wait, we, we just might put some videos up. And doesn't, we, okay. Yeah, <laughs> we no, can do everything online. Oh wait, the world discovered the internet. Huh. Ah. <laughs> no, no, the, 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 that's what we need. We need we need like event organizers working over Steam remote play. Let's do yes, it. <laughs> let's do it. Road rage royale. No cheese involved. Was harmed. Um, neural oscillation games, man. This is something. I mean, it's more top down racing, but uh, mm. this look kind of retro. It is available for Linux, and hey, it's made with Unity. So better love story than Road Redemption, dude. I don't know. I mean, the car design kind of reminded me. What was that uh, car game that just had a? Sh- it had to have had like a mass where you painted on the track. Oh, I know. Yeah. Right. yeah, like stupid budget. I don't on remember it. the name, and but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was like they released it for like ten seconds and just like God, that never happened. It was like a drug money game or something. I don't know exactly. There is a <laughs> Royale with a cheese demo available if you want to play around with it. What do they say? Yeah, Last Man Racing Cyberpunk Post Apocalyptic Demolition Derby. So Tactical Racing? What? I'm expecting like some turn based racing. Dude, shit. it's got a handicap system that allows you to balance the game when playing against much stronger. Yeah, that's that's adaptive difficulty. Um, apparently that's a feature in twenty twenty. No, no online multiplayer. <laughs> oh, of course Get not. Local multiplayer. <laughs> and once again that argument returns. We're in the middle of a goddamn pandemic. But Pedro, what the hell? Pedro, in all <laughs> fairness, when was the last time you saw a racing game with fuck mothering combos? I mean, <laughs> Oh, um, I can't remember the name of it either, but it was also a top-down racing game um, where the controls were like you were guiding the car like you were pulling it along on a string. It I was wasn't a real game. Street, I was going to say street, street. I was going to say Street Fighter 2 because you have to beat up the car. <laughs> Could be. That is, no, that I can't remember meter. the name of it, but it was uh, uh, an unreal game, and it, we threw chairs at it a long time ago. Just make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you do, in fact, have a DirectX compatible, wait for it, sound card. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, so this next one's brought to you by uh, Curator Connect. Clay, baby. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, Dungeons of Clay from Shot X Studio, the creators of Danger Gazers, or Creator. I'm not entirely sure if it's a one-man studio. Could be. Could not be. I don't know. Danger Gazers. Uh, what was that? It was the uh, roguelike um, Binding of Isaac nuclear uh, throne style of uh, that, top-down could, could shootery you, could, game. Could you get more vague? No. Okay, Not really. That so. was pretty descriptive. Not really. That's, that's like 10,000 <laughs> uh, games I, I, on Steam. Yeah, I mean, it's descriptive up to a point that it points you towards the genre of game, Pedro. <laughs> we threw chairs at it, so there's another. I, I, again, again, we've thrown chairs at a lot of these. <laughs> wheel of fortune. It's a fate wheel, man. It's not the wheel of Booga Booga. No, this is not just a gold, uh, gold rain. rain. Yeah, right? Oh, boy. Oh, Chocolate and rain. That type of game. What it uh, what, it is a roguelike platformer basically, uh, so that's not getting any more descriptive. But it looks all right, and so I sent the developer an email since he sent us keys last time. I figured, you know what? Let's ask. 
And uh, I did like Danger Gazers, unlike you two. So there's that. Uh, <laughs> God damn it, Patreon. Look, look, look. See, it doesn't exist. <laughs> How about you go back and put an S instead of a Z? <laughs> Listen, don't, don't judge him based on his illiteracy. Poor Ben just learned how to write. <laughs> it's difficult, man. I mean, okay, yeah, I vague, yeah, I remember this. I remember it nuclear I like throne the, um, style roguelite top down shooter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I described it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a thing. It, the developer said his key, so thank you very much, Shot uh, X. Shadex? Shadex? Yeah. Shadex. Yeah. Uh, Shadex. And, uh, we may or may not throw chairs at Dungeon Clay in the upcoming future. <laughs> the future. It just depends, man. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for our steamy stuff, man. Yeah. Coming up next. What? I can't hear you. My AMD GPU fan is too loud. Ah! And in true LGC tradition, we do have some graphics drivers we need to address. But before we do that, we need to address you. Every single one On of an you envelope. Uh, out there. Nope. We're, we're, we're gonna... You're made of paper and extremely foldable. Is that what you're getting at? Do you ever have to f- <laughs> when was the last time you filled out like an analog um, envelope thing? Before I moved to the UK, uh, I had to do one um, of those. <laughs> like a stamp. And, uh, yeah, a, a, a couple of years ago, because I changed my address. Um, okay, and, here, here's a better one. Raise your hand if you just have a full box of envelopes for all reason. For no reason. Yep, like, yep. Well, I, 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 have, I have a reason for it. To okay. store paper, but yeah, not, I not for mail. I moved to the UK, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I had to mail in my taxes a couple of years ago because I changed my address. So that was that was that. There, okay, there. I mine was tax related too. That's why I have a box because I needed one. Right. Exa- exactly. <laughs> you you would think so, like at like a petrol station where they like one of those sketchy petrol stations. I'm like, would you just like to buy a cigarette? But like, yo man, can I get like a envelope? <laughs> Well, yeah, it's like, can I buy a stamp? No, don't you want, like, the whole thing of stamps? No. Also, why I have an entire ten. book of stamps that are out of date? Yes. Speaking of, so, for for the low, low price of a stamp, instead of, you know, increasing your the value of your stamp collection, you could support us by heading on over to linuxgamecast.com, moving your mouse over the support button, maybe clicking on some of the links, like our store. We, we have a store, store.linuxgamecast.com, where you can buy some t-shirts. Aha, there or, it is. Look at that. Yeah, Ta-da. or you can buy some stickers, or... Fanny packs, maybe? Coffee mugs? Fanny stickers. Well, I mean, any sticker's a fanny sticker if you just put it there. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Technically, it is a sticker on your fanny. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't matter if you have an American fanny or a British fanny. It's still a fanny sticker. Um, <laughs> we, we, we got, we got uh, other ways to support us directly monetarily. If you want to give us some PayPal, some Bitcoin, best way to do it is to head on over to Patreon. Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Gets you cool stuff for becoming... Uh, patron of ours or subscriber a yes. snub sniper i don't know you can get access to the pre pre super shows and show up at 7 30 on saturdays in discord or on youtube and you can listen to us bitch and moan about i guess well, I, you know, I was Jordan, complaining. Like, uh we were talking earlier like in the pre pre super shows and go check that out uh if you're a patron ha but Aha. um background noise man if you like kind of a gym I'm like yo all right these guys are talking about linux whatever you know ha, ha, they're making the funnies you get four extra hours of that well, three, really, you have to subtract the main show from the uh, Live and Uncut series, which we make available in podcasts and video form. Indeed. So. Uh, you also get us access to our Discord channel. Uh, you could get access to our show notes. You could buy your way on the damn show if you want. Mm-hmm. Or we, we, we got plugs, you know, Nixon's Pyramid and PowerShell on Linux. Power and Linux and, Pyramid. <laughs> we have a pyramid Power, scheme. Ni- Power Nixon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nixon's yeah. Pyramid on PowerShell Linux. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we got some people to think, though. Uh, our Theron sent us some stuff. He did? Uh, so, yeah. So we, we, we got to roll this back. Um, we were talking about this. Pedro and I, um, on a show we do on Wednesday, on this dog food or own stuff, weekly, daily Wednesdays. Go check that out. And just random conversation. I threw a thing on. Uh, we, have, we have a wish list. I don't use it correctly. It's like, ah, oh, just like I'm going to be buying something. So, and I was like, hey, Pedro. Yeah, you ever seen one of these? What do you think about this? Yeah, I'm trying to make something quiet for Jackbox. And we were looking like, not like a regular AIO, 
we were looking like a little fucky AIO, man. It was like you, the baby, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like 120 millimeters. It's like, do you think, you know, because uh, Jackbox is like OG Ryzen 1700 non X variant, 65 watts. Like, do you think maybe that'll get away with it? And we learned uh, we don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After Jordan did much searching. I, uh, I looked on their website and they do not give a TDP rating for that cooling block. <laughs> so what do we have here? Um, this is something that you can get to uh, send in and against us, our better judgment. We're going to read it out loud from our theory. And you know, him, you love him. Oh Even. boy. Here's a device to keep the Jackbox and this show cool. Oh man, I don't have cool shades. I might in post though. Ah, uh, give Frank <laughs> a high five. Deal with it. See, Frank, see how high those fives are? Oh, yeah. man, he's leaving you hanging. What a douche. <laughs> Bitch. Um, <laughs> he's just got the candy. No. Hail Santa <laughs> from our theater. What are we talking about? Mm. This thing. <laughs> H60, bro. We got some high quality H2O. Mama H60. said, Mama H60. said H60. AIOs are um, very versatile because they're Mandula Oblongata and they get all them teeth no toothbrush there's a water boy joke in there somewhere if you mind deep enough <laughs> so 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 what you're saying that you need to liquid cool your computers with gatorade because it does a better job than no water? With, with alligators mm. <laughs> liquid cooling that's old school or, 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 cooling. Colonel, San or colonel sanders <laughs> cool, cooler, cooler sanders mama said uh we're gonna try this out we genuinely don't know um no i i think are, are we all in agreement like it probably should we jackbox is a 1700 eight Hyperthreading enabled, uh, clocked at 3.3 gigajoules, and it's typically under a perfectly sustained 35% load across all cores. Should be. Yeah, that so should it, be. It's plenty. not necessarily <laughs> will this keep it cool, but will it keep it cool and manage to be quieter than mm -hmm. a Hyper 212 Evo? Coming up next week, a giant fireball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the whole thing, man. That's what we were talking about Wednesday. I'm like, you know, the 212 Evo only gets shouty after like hour three on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll find out. Uh, thank you again. And uh, I will most definitely be keeping all the paperwork just in case this thing explodes and tries to kill me. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't unlike, think it'll do that. <laughs> unlike your Radeon card, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those don't do that. Well, yeah. they don't do that right now because the fan never spins down. But uh, with this patch that uh, Evan Kwan from AMD, yeah, uh, he sent to uh, Mesa. Well, uh, it enables quite a few things uh, for uh, the AMD GPU drivers, which is uh, this is for the non-pro ones because Mesa. Uh, so uh, the like the bullet points are enable zero RPM fan, which. Finally, that RX 570 that I have in El Cheapo will actually be able to spin down because it's a Strix model that's got a pretty massive uh, copper heatsink on it. So yeah, the the whole point between this uh, for the Strix cards are that the fans don't even spin up until you hit like 70. But so. but, but intellectually, you got to understand um, from the development side i understand it's like yeah it's better just to have them running if we can't get the uh, science <laughs> yeah. down all the way right <laughs> no so yeah that's one of the things that mesa didn't do but it does it now so that's that's very good finally it, it took a yeah. while but yeah <laughs> yeah we're Go not ahead, we're Jordan. not gonna be we're not gonna be seeing most of this until like kernel 510 ish so but it, it, yeah. it is still nice to see uh some of the older cards getting some love i mean the steam hardware survey has like the 480 as like the king of the linux pile at the moment mm -hmm. so you know it could probably use some power saving features like this if people are going to be keeping on using it i think that's really neat man especially um you gotta think despite uh some people's beliefs like those cards are just getting stupid cheap Oh so, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, you can you can you can grab like a five eighty for like a hundred bucks. Yeah, and they're about to get like wicked stupid mm. cheap. Yeah, hopefully the, 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 the Navi's aren't though. <laughs> that's for sure. Fuck. Mm, we don't know. I mean, they, they were talking about. It. I was seeing like some of the rumor mills already, sp you know, spooling up like more believable from sources that mm -hmm. we're going to be looking at like a sixteen gig variant. That's going to be like four hundred bucks. 
Oh yeah, but they're, they're not, oh, they're not gonna... That would make NVIDIA really rush that uh, 3080 yeah. Ti or 3080 Super, whatever that well, is. I, I, well, I, I, I mean, the, the, the downside is you're not going to be able to use it on your Linux until next year, so... Why do you hate it is Linux, Andy, so. Jordan? <laughs> quit, quit saying things that typically well, happen with... Something so controversial yes, yet brave. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Code weavers, man. They've been around for a while, man. They've been around for a minute. And um, they've always made some products, you know, if like you wanted to get Office installed or anything like that. Your productivity stuff didn't, uh, and they've been responsible for a lot of wine development, man. I got to give them the love for that. Well, well, kids, they got a press release. If Robin what? Hood and Tux, the Linux <laughs> penguin, had a love child, a yeah, rebranded uh... code motherfucker <laughs> that's right a unique approach okay they're, they're going through all the stuff that they've done but they're introducing some new things man there's like walking through like hey we got some new things going on blah 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 blah. the two big ones uh the first one they got a new service uh jordan what was it called uh port jumps right Port, port jump yeah uh it's one of their consulting things um if you if, you gotta pay a lot more if you actually want them to do some proof of concept work but uh for now they'll do like uh they'll do an evaluation see what they can do to get the um to get the your application or whatever running with wine apparently squeenix is using this yeah, uh, man, uh, well, yeah. okay like from the official press uh it Helps app and game developers broaden their market data code weavers uh, technology. No source code changes are required. This sound, that sounds familiar. I've heard these words before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, virtual programming. I mean, might as well. It's not like virtual programming is doing much in the way of Linux ports anymore. So and, <laughs> someone and might Lin want to take up the mantle. L Linux gaming is all Proton now anyways, so mm, you might yeah. as well try and monetize. <laughs> like, so the, 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 this is kind of the, the, the op-ed from uh, about C Machines was kind of bringing into this where like there's not really a lot of like value or money to be earned from like doing this kind of work. So hopefully something like this, I don't know, will open up a revenue stream or two to like get wine some more fun. Well, they get this, man. I mean, it's not outrageous. They're like, yo, if you want us to take a look at your situation, you know, maybe we can uh, help situate it. It's going to be like 450 an hour set for like 20 hours to a couple of grand mm -hmm. if you want to do that. Yep. And um, yeah, it's part of a brave new world. There is the, uh, Valve's also a client. There's the consulting service too that they're looking to spin out. They're like, you got problems, Ninja got answers. And mm -hmm. Exec mode. <laughs> exec mode, man. Like, come on. <laughs> Why not? They, they'll, like, get exec mode, like, all over you. Let me rub it on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. And Code Weavers, yeah, they've been around for a while. And uh, apparently, Proton's been doing very well. So they kind of want to get in on their action. <laughs> now, I, I'm going to be honest. I was reading that press release. And I'm like, did you, did you guys hire, like, a like one of the writers from electronic gaming monthly from like 95 96 because that that's got some like mid 90s wannabe edge all over it that it doesn't jive with what i it, expect it, from COVID it reads like a sega ad yeah yeah right. it does doesn't it you're like oh you're gonna start talking about the orange clown that haunts my dreams throw that in there free charge <laughs> if we're um, picking up the nits uh i i have an issue to raise with their new logo okay as in, I thought there was something wrong with my monitor when I first saw it. <laughs> oh, go fuck yourself, Pedro, because check this out, man. Check this out. Their entire web zone looks like a video cutscene from Road Rash on the Sega CD. It's like somebody discovered that fake ass 3D filter and they're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yes, chromatic let's... aberration. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. That's one of the after uh, motion blur but that's hey, the man. second thing I turn off in game. Yeah, who, who needs anti-lacing? <laughs> Look at all the nice little jaggies. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one interesting thing, though, is that they're they're trying to advertise this. One of the, one it's of the big things there. It's got a skull. A skull. It's, it's got a skull in half. half, with half of it being neon green. They're, 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 they're trying to position themselves as a solution for Chrome OS as well, which I find kind of interesting if they're trying to break into that market segment. Hey, take your crappy like $200 Google laptop and actually run some software on it. Too bad you don't have the hard drive space to run it, but, you know, yeah. I'm going to say uh, that's fantastic. Uh, it's interesting that you guys have been around since 1999. You've been doing brilliant work. Uh, Rebrand, midlife crisis. It's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. And uh, the website. Oof. Yeah. Dev hey, developers aren't getting stuff running under Linux on their own. Might as well pay someone to do it. Right? Yeah. I'm doing it for you. 
They're doing something with uh, Square Enix too, aren't they? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, that's what popped out at me. I'm like, really? Square Enix is a customer, but that makes me think that they're maybe on the Android Chrome OS side of things you more. Never know. Mm-hmm. You never know. Maybe. I mean, you know, working with Chrome OS, man, being able to—it's uh, inter- interesting times. It, you know, we're just—I think it's not necessarily confusing or anything. It's just that we're in that time that people were like remember when there was a difference between operating systems or their like you know platform dependency was an actual thing mm-hmm. well, yeah, no. L- linux is a great platform for running software that's not supposed to run on linux well it's yeah. just like uh <laughs> it's gonna get down to uh like whatever boots your hypervisor mm-hmm. that's what I, that's what, an operating what, system what, whatever, whatever connects you to the cloud provider that's streaming your OS to your device. Eventually, yeah. 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 So, uh, all right. Gotta stop. Nernia Pause. Kit? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Nernia, <laughs> the, or Nerna, Nina, Nani Nan, slash lift button. Anyways, uh, this is the pause nar, button for. Nar, 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 nar. Anyways, so uh, we talked about this project a while ago. This is the pause button. You know how, like, on, say, your Nintendo Switch or your PlayStation or whatever. Um, Wave it around some more. Woo! Your your um, Sega Switch station. <laughs> watch, watch it just 64. go flying. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, out of, out of, straight out of my hands. Oh yeah, but like you you can you can hit pause and like you can power or you can put the console in like low power mode and just pick it up when you want to play again. Can't really do that on PC. Well, now you can. Uh, they have a new version out. This is one point three now with more about buttons, so you can find out about this thing after you install it uh they have a couple more fixes um about why in virtual desktops if you're running I, I your just app like there. not reading any of the text i'm like it makes some blue triangles bitches that's all i'd write right there um. indeed <laughs> um and yeah uh, apparently it would try to suspend with process id zero because it's trying to be system d apparently and would not <laughs> isn't that process id one i don't know i'm just curious where are they running like what icons that? this is like master chief with a fur hat on uh, anyway yeah um, and and anywho, uh, it's out. Uh, I again, I wouldn't try this with like <laughs> online multiplayer games. Okay. Yeah, Ch- chocolate chocolate is <laughs> the app to get for Windows. That that's what that is. Thank you, because that's not where my deprived mind went. <laughs> chocolate rain. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, don't don't try it on multiplayer games. But you know, if you're playing a single player game, I like Disgaea. Disgaea. This game, this uh, app is great for because those levels are fucking long, and sometimes you just want to stop playing for a bit and do something else. Well, how many times have yeah. you been genuinely forced to sit and dick around in a game, exploring because you were try, waiting try for that save thing to. Come up. Yeah, it's like yeah. trigger the auto save already. Trigger the auto save. Oh, there we go. Finally. Uh, yeah. Alt F four. <laughs> Unfortunately, or, or, that's that's just become like that inbuilt save with modern game engines has become a crutch for fucking developers. So like, no, it'll do it for me. We just mm-hmm. so, so map out the little mm-hmm. points. And- well, then, well, then you get something like near where like hunting or like Dark Souls, where hunting for save points is kind of like the point of the game. But yeah, yeah Dark I Souls get, is because... kind of online. You'd get banned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, it's it's available. You can check it out. Um, it's it's real handy for sure, for sure. So yeah. I have bring back the pause button. <laughs> a little bit of curiosity that has arrived on GitHub. And I don't want to say it's like open source, but I don't want to say it's the source of variable available. This is a blast from the past. We're talking about something that was running on the ID Tech 3. Now, we're also talking um, about a game that Loki ported way back in the day. And ironically, it is the only Loki Pokey title that I don't have a box copy of. We're talking about fact two. Heavy metal, indeed. Heavy metal. <laughs> Tools and source code. It is out. It is available. And uh, I don't. What does this mean? I mean, not not much. The game, right, game kind of sucks. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 I mean, the game kind of sucked. The movie it was based off of kind of sucked. But you know, it's it's good to have this sort of preservation because I'm sure uh, my opinion is not shared by everyone. How dare you not share my opinion about? Yeah, if you're wondering player. what the game is, think like Heretic Two, but with a big breasted protagonist. Yeah, well, it's that episode of South Park where Kenny gets high on cat piss, and they're, that's, that's, they're literally making fun of heavy metal in that episode. I so. believe the clinical term is called cheesing. 
cheesing yes <laughs> okay yeah, yeah you know what netflix or amazon should do like a fucking heavy metal series they could get they could get away with that they have no standards uh, that, of that, yeah it, it was basically it would still just like drugs with a small budget i mean it, yeah it was and, a different time gets um, in, indeed oh man so not to be outdone with retro hipsterness no, no, you were talking about it. Tank three. Well, shit. <laughs> this one predates that. Too new for you. Bit. Oh man, you're gonna beat me. <laughs> Boo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is Sin. Uh, you may remember Sin. Uh, it's one of the it tech games from long, long ago. Ritual Entertainment. And, yeah. Yep. And uh, I remember playing that game, dude. I've never played the game, but I I know the box art. I'm like, yeah, I know that. Yep. yep. And uh, I played it right up until the point where it always uh, hit a really nasty bug that I couldn't progress, which is uh, something happens and your main character gets transformed into a big monster and you have to go through a lab in order to be uh, reverted back to human. Okay, I think this is the one that was... Okay, this this is a dump, dude, because it's like, all right, what's our structure? Yeah. I'm like, oh, there's, there's something no, in there. There's, there's, there, there is no just structure. the files. Okay, what are they using to navigate that? Is they got like some bash the, in there or something? The visual uh, studio probably yeah or it's probably bloodshed. visual studio if you point uh if you clone the uh the git and you point adam at it it actually makes sense of what it is and okay, gives okay. you something so with adam you could probably get started it probably won't build right out of the box this is version 110 so it is the patch after they fixed a bunch of the bugs which is amazing because i want someone to get this up and running on Linux so I can finally finish the game because I was always stuck at that point and I couldn't progress. So please, please, developers, <laughs> fix it for me. <laughs> I don't, I mean, it's for archival purposes. I'm glad this is out there. And I'm sure like everyone else, uh, not everyone, I'm sure some people are diving into it. I can see like Alan was like, yep, I'm take a look at that. Or um, Rohit. I went into that because some people in chat room that are down with it. I'll, I'll politely sit back and wait. Like, all right, once we get a modern lit, plus being able to like run a modern implementation of it without having to uh, resort to like weird hacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> speaking of old ass games, come on, man. <laughs> You're making me feel <laughs> making me feel old, man. Just like you are old. Yeah. You're like eight years younger than me. The oldest. Yeah, I'm a baby. Yeah. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> Dude, think about this. Um, it was a different time, man. We're, we're going to go back uh, to October 15th, 2001, man. So there used to be Loki, if you're unfamiliar with the Linux gaming history. I lived through it, which is why I'm so much of a Linux gaming advocate now, because those were the promised times, man. And um, late 90s, early 2000s. We had AAA titles being published to Linux in boxes, in stores. I went to a store. I went to Electronic Boutique and bought a Linux Ooh. game in a box. I'm like, oh, nice. and it was normal. Like, it was normalized because Loki was around a little while before they just... And, um, but from those ashes, rose a company called... LGP Linux game publishing. And there was just a little mention over on, um, our Linux, like on this day, October 15th, 2001, LGP was formed by Mike Phillips, Michael Sims after previous Linux game supporting company, Loki entertainment went bankrupt. So I was like, Oh, that was a nice, sweet little mention, man. Uh, do we, Come on, really. <laughs> that, that cursive logo with the superimposed tux. Hey, welcome to Reddit. <laughs> hey, nice memory. Go fuck yourself. You, 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 you Photoshop sucks, Dufresne. Top, top comment. Top comment, too, so, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. Linux is a score gaming in a nutshell. That's just our Linux, baby. Um, oh, <laughs> womp womp. Dude. Um, I never really tangled with, I mean, I was a fan of, um, you know, like the continuation, if you'd really call it, you know, they didn't have quite the output by any stretch of the imagination. I never bought anything from LGP because it was always, you know, sometimes eight months, year, two years later. And it was like 69 pounds for a nice two or three year old game. It's mm, good pull the trick. I almost... Hey man, I almost bought ballistics like three times, but I just couldn't live with myself. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I did I, buy I, something I, from them. 
<laughs> I, I I never did, but I did a bit of research. I I looked up Linux Game Publishing just to refresh my memory on some of the stuff they did. Wikipedia has a very healthy section of articles on Linux gaming, by the way. The one on Iculus is a lot longer than I would have given it credit for. It does not mention grilled cheeses at all. Um, but like Steam Machines, <laughs> these guys, while not the most successful, did produce a lot of work that like laid foundation for a lot of better Linux gaming stuff in the future. They were big contributors to OpenAL. They were big contributors to SDL. So, I mean, with, without the work that they did, we'd probably be in a much worse place. So it's good to, you know, look back and see how far we've come. Hmm? Now now, now you don't need to port games. You just run them on one. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bitter about that at all, Jordan. No. <laughs> a little, a little, maybe, maybe, maybe a little. Listen, <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> we, we're so spoiled, we can pay other companies to run them on wine for us. All right? Exact, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That is, yeah. Yep. But no, I, yeah. I, I, I'm one of those people that, uh, you remember Desura? I, I mentioned this in the pre show, but yeah, do you remember Desura yeah. when that was a game client that you could compile yourself on Linux and uh, run it and it sold Desurium. games? Desurium. Yeah. Desurium. <laughs> And uh, that I, when I started using Linux, I started looking at all the games that were available. It's like, oh yeah, try Desura. I did, and I saw that Sacred Gold had a Linux version. It's like, oh, we're buying that. That was like ten pounds at the t or ten euros at the time. So that was pretty good and the game worked very well. In fact, it had the exact same bugs that the Windows version did. So very good job on the board. <laughs> I remember getting, we got review copies through Desura. We did. Yeah. There's, there's that shotgun golf, uh, zombie golf game. Yeah. Zolf, yep. Yep. yeah. That, that yeah. Wasn't, I mean, that was weird enough to be kind of, and then there was like the little pickle game, like Funhouse. The Z pickle game, the robot game with the floating robots. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I've successfully blocked that one. Um, yeah. Crunch, I, 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 I think I, it was Crunch or something. like. That. I had Megabyte Punch on Desura, but they did that thing after a while where you could like move all your, you could extract your game keys uh, and redeem them on Steam. Right. So I did that. And then I stopped. I just copied the zero. files, the files for uh, Sacred and a few others that I didn't have on Steam. I just downloaded them and moved the files. And you don't, you don't need the Zura to run them. So, I, yeah. <laughs> I genuinely, if you just cut the shot of me and you just see the flames burning in my reflection of my eyes, I'm like, bye. I whatever, didn't <laughs> burn. <laughs> All right. Well, speak, speaking of burning, coming up next, we're going to hell, or a black hole, or maybe that movie, The Black Hole, where they went to hell. Who knows? Where we're going, we won't need eyes. We're back. We're doing the Chairquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Hexpoint from Cradle Games, done on the Unity engine. Surprisingly small download size. It's like five gigs. I thought it would be a lot bigger. Um, it's about $34.99 US. Uh, what is it? Hell, or Hexpoint, sorry, is an intense action <laughs> RPG taking place on Idrid Novo, a derelict space station soaked in an intoxicating dark sci-fi atmosphere. Fight dreadful creatures, face the cosmic gods, and unravel their twisted story. Should the challenge be too great, play with a friend in local or online coop um yeah no no mandatory disclosure this week uh nope. ben bought me a copy pedro i think already bought a copy for himself uh, a while ago. arthur and bought me a copy <laughs> ah we were just spreading the love baby it's like, indeed. It's gonna, you you so, gonna inflict this on you pedro self-inflicted <laughs> Stab my own dick. All right. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. So I, I guess I'm going first this week. Uh, so on Fedora 32 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, it launches out of the box. It holds 68 UHD, which is actually kind of nice because apparently that's the only resolution this game wants to run at. Incorrect. You got to put it in the mode yeah. and you got to fucking I, fight it. You got to take your gloves off and you got to get patient. You got to sit down and fucking wait. And eventually you can squirrel it down to 1080. Yeah, I, I tried. I tried. Uh, I tried putting it in uh, borderless windowed mode. I edited the press file. Eventually, I just gave up. I'm just like, fuck it, whatever. Um, <laughs> the visual style is actually really good. Uh, I like the Hellraiser esque nightmare hell future. Uh, really reminds me of home. Um, the graphics themselves are probably on par with about a mid tier Xbox 360 PS3 game. That doesn't really ding it anything. It just looks like 
and budget game. Um, the soundtrack is okay. Spoopy space noises. We get it. Uh, the controls are fine, but I did the Dark Souls heresy thing and I rebound the attack buttons from the bumpers to the triangle and square buttons on the DualShock because then I could actually play this game and like not die instantly, which is kind of nice. And honestly, I, I was surprised because given the bad taste Dark Souls 3 left in my mouth, I was a little worried about this one because uh, it's, you know, it's a Dark Souls clone. Uh, you're going to be hearing a lot of that phrase this chairquisition mm -hmm. for sure um it's certainly a lot easier than dark souls mainly because i'm not dying as much so i assume i haven't gotten any better uh but i but going through i, I actually found myself enjoying the gameplay loop um the opening area keeps looping back to the same place over and over again which kind of drills in like oh you're just looking for shortcuts um but you get after dying a bit you get real good at speed running areas that's for sure um and yeah, the, the objectives are the same for any sort of Dark Souls game. Run around, cheese enemies, try and find the next save point, don't die, and live, die, repeat. Makes me feel a lot like Tom Cruise. And I could make a Scientology joke there, but they write themselves. Um, yeah, so don't one, one thing I did learn, though, don't jump in elevators while they're going down, though, because I lost like three quarters of my health doing that, and then I got into a fight, and I'm like, well, fuck. Um... Honestly, I'm surprised I like this as much as I did. Um, it's a pretty straightforward copy paste of uh, Dark Souls, but replace dark fantasy with dark sci-fi. And yeah, it's it's atmospheric. Um, the gameplay is all right, and I'll give I'll give it three chairs. Yeah. And uh, over here on uh, KDE Neon with the Ryzen 7 3700X, I'm about to get my ass kicked by that particular boss right there. It's and a the displacer GTX beast. It's a kitty cat. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a displacer beast. beast, but they call uh, they called it a celestial beast. Uh, but yeah, it launched out of the box. It doesn't really hold 144 frames at 2560 by 1440. You can actually see from Mango HUD there. It holds around 100. Uh, it never really dips below 80, so that's pretty good. Uh, the DualShock 4 worked out of the box, but more on that in a bit. The graphics, like Jordan said, they don't look spectacular, but they do a very good job of conveying the Event Horizon style atmosphere without the now very glaring uh, green screen. And for some of those scenes, if you actually go back and watch that movie, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, tentacles. The, yeah, the uh, sound effects, uh, sometimes they don't trigger. You hit something and you're expecting the chunk and it doesn't happen. So that feels very unsatisfying. <laughs> As for the fun, well, it has everything that it needs to hook me in and not let me go for a while, but for some reason, I'd forgotten I had it until Vince said that we were throwing chairs at it. It's like, oh yeah, no, Arthurin gave me that, and I played it, and I beat the first boss, so what the hell? It may be the ramping up of the difficulty at the beginning, which I got to witness from an outside perspective when I was watching Ven stream it, um last Friday, uh, it's like, oh yeah, no, you hit that too. Okay, so it's not just me. Yeah, there is a bit of a, uh, because like the little chumps that you're killing as you're just walking around, yeah, those die pretty easily. But then you run into a boss or even a slightly taller enemy, you need to learn their patterns or you're just not gonna have a very good time. The, um... Yeah, it, it is a carbon copy of Dark Souls, obviously, and the combat uh, that you experience is very much on par with Bloodvein. Uh, the big difference here is that the it's a science fa a fantasy, a dark science fantasy setting, rather than your typical just high fantasy or even like similar modern day type of situation oh, like Oh, so, you, so you're saying this is like the second second Riddick movie. Got it. Got it. Yes. <laughs> Boris Carl yeah. Urban. Uh the only real uh negative that I could find is what I hinted at earlier with the DualShock 4 is sometimes it will do the Dark Souls and Hand of Fate thing where it queues up all of the inputs that you send it and as long as you have enough stamina it will re do those inputs as soon as you it's done with one of them. Okay, that's fine. I could I, my brain is used to that. But other times it didn't. I still have stamina, so that's not it. I haven't been stun locked by an enemy, so that's not it either. Whatever it is, it makes my character stand uh, stand around gormlessly while three uh, something three times its size just carves me into a jack-o'-lantern. Uh, it honestly, 
I want to play through it at least the once, just so I can see all the different areas. But it's got the same issue that the Talos Principle did for me, which is I get the game mechanics, but they feel a little bit like a chore to get through. I wish I could just, you know, skip that and just look at the frankly amazing atmosphere and the areas that they've created because they do look very nice and i do like where the story is going it's conveyed in the dark souls way where it, you have to actively seek the story otherwise it's just not going to tell you about it but yeah i i want to see that so i'm probably going to end up playing all the way through it so three chairs <laughs> did you uh there, there's that area where you get to the locker room did you look up the code you need to punch in for that i got a pair yeah. of sideburns from it <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's right at the start it's for it's meant for uh kickstarter big, uh backers yeah uh, if you backed it you get special items and there were a few people that did post the codes on uh the codes online <laughs> yep yeah yeah well it launches just that's over here on the threadripper 1920x 32 gigs of RAM, 2060 displayed, all the fun stuff running. You know what you love, a Debian. 10 point slow, 10 point old, but it gets the job done. It does have some uh, system level herky jerk, like it was jerking around OBS when I was streaming Friday. In that loading menu, not in the game itself, but just we want to get started, man. Oh, uh, I was I was generally worried. Now getting that resolution changed, that's an adventure in itself. It's a practice, a patience, uh, if you want to go through it. Once you get like in game though, at 1080p, even with a little 2060, get between 90 and 120. That's with everything on YOLO at 1080p. How fucking ever? Go back and watch my stream, baby. Because it's blink, blink, sparkle, blink. And no, no, nay, that's not the title of an upcoming LGC holiday album. <laughs> it is not. It's all I was seeing when I was in game. I mean, this game was dry humping my retinas right out of the gate with these just random black blinky squares and sparkles and it, it was a kaleidoscope of nightmares uh it, it was to the point where it was laughable i wasn't even terribly irritated by it but control wise you know it worked just fine with the excluding controller no complaints there it worked and i played it like you're supposed to play a dark souls game with the shoulder buttons like a real person now the little baby's gotta put it on a little oh i need an x and a <laughs> oh <sighs> yeah but hey, man, it does run. It makes sounds. I mean, technically, it, it does that thing. Now, let's talk about the fun, because this is a Souls-like. But this time, get this, kids. You might be aware, if you're watching the video version, it's in space. Yeah. Like, this motherfucker doesn't even try to be anything else. Like, not even a little bit. Hell, they didn't even bother filing off the numbers on this critter. You have, like, totes, not bonfires that you gotta go back to. Uh, clunky, tedious the combat. Rifts. Huge fan. <laughs> Enemy lock on. And the ability to run around in circles. Yeah, okay. There's even a crafting element if Pedro is to be believed. Now, I put up with 90 full minutes of this nonsense with no friction whatsoever because Hellpoint drops you off and it says, have at yo, go explore, fucko, which I did. No story, no narrative, no, like, mm, nope, just go die a lot. Okay, I can do that. I got bored. No, it's, uh, could be the lack of the story, could that opening level that was just boring as boring as level design to be da, da, the da, 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 ai da, da, da. <laughs> mm, wasn't that great man it was like oh this is dumb okay i can kill them real easy oh they don't know i just run by them however don't let any of that put you off since by all accounts if you put some extra time into this like pedro really is the game will treat you to just straight up game breaking bugs yes those are still hanging around three months after release but in this game's defense at least on my end it did try to warn me at the very beginning of the game with a blinky technical shit show right out of the gate. So it's not like I didn't expect something. Now, um, I was able to power through Code Weeb, but this, this is not so much, man. I mean, I got that where my entertainment was streaming with the community and having people like just tell me the obvious things that I was fucking right. I was just fucking around having a good time. I got somebody to chat with, but as a game itself, wasn't impressed. I was glad to see this being the second title that I personally know of that uses Vulcan with Unity. Um, I'm glad to see that. Wish I didn't have some of the uh, visual glitches, but if I want to say my verdict for this game, and again, Souls like Soulsborne shit is not my cup of chainsaw, kids. You know, if you like it, that's cool. You know, I'm at the point in my life, I'm like, all right, I'm glad you enjoy it. Me, just not so much. Uh, what I got to say is quite simple. 
for me, I think heck point is what happens when ambition writes a check that your technical department just can't fucking cash, man. It's like almost the game. Seem fair? Man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't think it's that ambitious, to be honest. <laughs> no, it, it, I, I mean, One like, chair. I mean, yeah, like, it, it's pretty obvious this is just Control-C, Control-V of Dark Souls, but, you know, if you're yeah. into that sort of game, that's maybe what you want. It, it's like it's like roguelikes or turn-based tactic games or whatever. Well, it's kind or, of what I was trying to get when I'm talking about, like, uh, Code Vein, like, that, that's Dark Souls with uh, anime vampires, but yeah. mm-hmm. it mixes some shit up enough to the point you know, and it has a story. Uh, well, they kind of ham fist the story down. Com- okay, okay. Compared to <laughs> the fucking void, that is this. <laughs> compared uh, to the nothing. Dark Souls yes. way of telling the story, which is you actively have to seek it out because if you don't, it's just going to go, oh, hey, here's a game. Go play it. <laughs> well, you are actively seeking it out by the practice of playing the damn game in the first place. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know about that because like some some people are into lore some people just want the fights so they they segment I'm that a out. very mechanical person and if you are hiding the story behind those mechanics i'm behind you on that one that's part of the reason why i like dark souls so much <laughs> hey man like i said some people like get the rocks off running around in circles just not me but more power too yeah. uh what is this currently 39 it's seven percent off man so wait what yeah. is it yeah. 34.99 yeah. tiny build it's got online co-op, but I was just reading through the comments. And everybody's like, "That shit don't work." Not even a little bit. Just like Dark yeah. Souls. To be fair, the Dark I've Souls, seen Dark one Souls works. works through Proton. Yeah, but the 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 thing with this game is, uh, for the online bits, it generates a code, and then the person you want to join you uh, punches in that code and connects to your world. That's not working terribly well. No. <laughs> well, you know what? At the very least, there's always remote play because it does have local multiplayer. Oh, yeah. But- yeah. All right. So coming up next, we talk about sudden infant death syndrome, I guess. I don't know. And wouldn't you know it, heck point is uh, this surprisingly Dude, well. Dude, what you think about it? it you you could imagine nice. like a tentacle kid. That'd be a <laughs> fucked up Malmix commercial, wouldn't it? <laughs> just like, it like just sucks up a cat and starts eating it. I mean, that was I'd watch that Captain Marvel. Way. That's yeah. Captain Marvel. So there's just like blood flying everywhere. I'm like, oh, yeah. hi. But yes, welcome to the. If you'd like to uh, tell us exactly where your blood flies when you're um, conquering and uh, defeating your enemies, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com and you hit the contact button. There's a forum there. If you'd like to uh, give us your game for us to throw our review chairs at, feel free to include three Steam keys or. Uh, something that we can share because well if you don't you just get made fun of you know what listen man if you get like a three-part steam key just give us each a part we won't we won't know what to fucking do with it (laughs) yeah yeah, we're not that clever it's it's usually in like the three parts anyway so you can just Mm -hmm. give each of us like six characters and (laughs) have you ever seen like somebody do that on twitter they'll put like steam kicks for like one they'll leave it blank i'm like Mm -hmm. i don't care enough yeah, no, y'all, no, y'all, I'm y'all not have gonna, fun. First, first, no. first come, first serve, right? Like, right. He's like, I, I, I apparently have negative thirty-two fucks to give on that. Um, mm-hmm. all plus numbers. So, yeah. <laughs> oh man, we didn't get much this week, but we got one about uh, Debian. Yes, this is from Hadets, and they say uh, I'm unable to install Steam on a fresh disinstall. Um, <laughs> Dis- okay. Disinstall. Uh, the following packages have unmet dependencies. LibGI uh, makes oh, it dry. Well, Jordan, I see the problem. It's got one to nine moon uh, ratio, yeah. so that that's not going to work. I mean, that, clearly. M- well, I mean, M O O N. That smells Mesa, right? Um, yeah. I so appara- appara- the- <laughs> apparently, you have uh, he has held broken packages. It would install fine last week. Don't recommend Debian. Love Hadet. Um, Hadets. Well, I would like to say like. My professional opinion, and you know, science-wise, go fuck yourself. Um, but outside <laughs> of that, <laughs> that was my professional opinion. Um, What's your personal opinion? Well, then this is a little—it's nowhere near that nice. Uh, if you're running Debian, Sid, go fuck yourself. I'm sorry. Uh, 
what I mean by that. Oh, Sid, is that what this is? <laughs> Sid. Is that what this is? Sid is like, what wa- is? Is like I know what walking. I said. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Sid dis. Dick. <laughs> new, new Sid who dis. <laughs> um, check this out, man. Sid is like when you want to look at like Arch, like that shit's too stale for me. I, I, I want something that is literally changing every fucking like multiple <laughs> times a day. Like you can run apt update on Sid like 40 minutes after each other and you're going to get 35 megs of like just new repo shit. So yeah, don't run Sid. It's going to break. Run um, testing. Testing's got a few days for that. Testing rarely breaks and it's effectively as up to date as Arch. If But it kind of defeats the point other than you're just familiar with Debian. You know, I get that. Do you like stick with certain just what does uh, Fedora is just Fedora, right? You don't have well, you got Rawhide. Yeah, there, there's Rawhide if you like to live dangerously. Um, and like, I, I, I've I've pulled stuff that's in development from like Koji and installed it, but that, but I know what I'm doing. So if it breaks, I'm not gonna go blame the package maintainer. I'm gonna be like, well, I installed an F35 package on an F32 system. I'm I'm surprised it worked at all. So shit. I was gonna say stick with like Buster. I mean, with any Debian, you have um, you have backports, and you have uh, testing, and you have unstable. So just like stick with like run run Debian if you're like uh, run the latest Debian, leave it the fuck alone. But you're gonna have some older shit. But you know everything runs. Steam will install. But you're gonna run into shit like yeah. that. You're gonna run into shit like that with Arch too, man. It's just some untested stuff, right? Yeah, literally yeah. what that is, is uh, LibGL Mesa is too old to recognize LibLLVM11. I it, think, it, so it, it I just th- doesn't know what that is. <laughs> I, th- I think I think there might be a broken dependency here, and if like what you guys are saying is true, that they just keep updating stuff, mm-hmm. perhaps maybe you should try again in a few days. Maybe they'll get the dependency yeah, chain sorted that, out. That will probably, okay. they will have okay. updated LibGL1 it, Mesa. Tell me how easy it is that. to say that versus you know you've been in this situation where you're like you know if i'm just patient and i'll wait a few more days they'll get this fixed but does that stop you from heading over to the git repo and like you know what i can freaking fix this uh yeah well well i, I mean <laughs> if, if 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 you're if you're relying on the package manager then yeah wait for the package manager if you want to go compile stuff if you want to build stuff for your no, own no system, no no pedro i didn't no, no no jordan i didn't want to go compile no, I'm, stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm pedro i'm pedro now shut up what do, you, what, do you, what do you think what do you think about this jordan <laughs> all right pedro calm down <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'm Jordan now, apparently. Uh, yeah. The easiest way to get around this is you remove uh, lib LLVM 11 and you go back to 10 that uh, lib GL1 that, Mesa probably recognizes. That might be a little tricky, though, because when, when you start pulling out like glib and LLVM dependencies, then it's like, oh, well, all these other things depend on it, so we're removing those too. Rolling forward, going from stable to testing to unstable... You don't roll backwards. I don't know. No, no. I mean, right. it, okay. Yeah, do that, but only if you need something to do. I mean, it's already broken. You already can't install Steam. So, what How are you going to do? Break it more? <laughs> no. Uh, if I was at this point and if I was impatient, I would do the intelligent thing, which should be the first thing everyone should have recommended was just to install the fucking um, flatback on Manjaro. <laughs> It's flat pack. Yeah, it works just fine now. <laughs> what uh, the flat pack is uh, kind of sort of recognized by Valve, but not officially supported. So you may get lucky with that. Do you think this fucking Debian hack installer on Debian is officially supported <laughs> by fucking. <laughs> <laughs> well, CMOS is based on Debian, so. At one point it was. Flawless goddamn <laughs> logic, Pedro. You are a bastion <laughs> of. Um... <laughs> On that bombshell, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thanks for riding the nightmare train with us. This is Four Hour Rock Block. We invite you to come by each and every week and participate live or after the fact. You can watch us on the YouTubes. We do have a YouTube channel. Twitch, if you want to sub, watch that. Patrons, you'll get the uncut live business up and early. If you want the first crack at the show, man, you can get a couple hours for everyone. Hop in our Discord. It'll be in the announcements tab, and it's going to be brilliant. But if you want to get a hold of me, I'm at Vinstone on Twitter, or just at Vin at mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm apparently still Pedro Mateus, so if you want to tweet at me, you can tweet at the Burning Fool on Twitter and be very confused when no one replies. Where's your Pedro? 
I don't know, Jordan. And Where I am my Jordan Pedro? Svung. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter. And no, this isn't going to get confusing at all. No, sir. No, three Bob. <laughs> I don't know who to switch to. <laughs> switch to Frank. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> no switch. No. Credits is probably a good idea at this point. <laughs> Supersonic tic tac. Oh, are they delicious? <laughs> I mean, try and catch one with your mouth. <laughs> Pay attention. I can only it's do a this once. It's tic-tac-like object. So yes, I will put it in my mouth. All right, we, we, we gotta thank our party <laughs> patrons, like our advisor, Vigilant Viking, and our executive producers, are there in MD, the Atomic Ass, Mike G, Barb Ramped, Aldius, Mac Geek, Scoots, Frosty Claw, Haplo, and Mr. Fox Dog, and the only Tiki. I and really should make some Frank beer mugs. <laughs> some Frankensteins? Yeah. Uh -huh. Dirty <laughs> Dean, we got Jack, Todd, Reichner, Nicole, the Silda, Grayson, Todd, Massavilli, Winter Cell, Kyle Linux, North Ranger, Ryan, Trugs. Vascat, Linux Noob, and Oxford, Dealer Gordon, Michal, Thomas, <laughs> Mr. Amish, Morse. Martin, Jill and Steve, they're still there. <laughs> Power show, Power show, Dodger. Power show, Power show. <laughs> Nixon, 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 Nixon. Power show, Power show. That's my new song. Shut up, Pedro. All right, whatever you say, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, I, I should be interrupting it. people at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>